Here we are in uh, Dearborn at the Arab American News on Chase Road. Just waiting on Frank to get here. Uh, but you can see the area that we're in. It's kind of nice. So, anyway, we'll go inside and I'll be taking some pictures. All right, bye bye. Same time, too, right? Also, the device can record them. Okay. Well, that, that's totally up to him. Whatever, yeah, check with him. whatever he wants to do, I'm, I'm totally game for all that. I'm just taking stills today, so it doesn't matter. I do video for my YouTube channel. The lighting seems okay. Here on. Well, I'm sitting here today with a young boxer coming up in the Detroit area, and over my years I've had the opportunity to see many of you young boxers come up through the ranks. And uh, right now it's your time to shine, Geith, and I'm here today with Geith Mohammed. Uh, from Dearborn, uh, Michigan. Uh, I first saw you, I want to say... Hold on, cut. 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 Yeah, make sure everybody's phone Yeah, I'll turn mine off. It's always the photographer's the How was the sound level on that? It was fine. Okay. I'm powered off, okay. We're still shooting, rolling, so anytime you're ready. Okay, I want to welcome everybody here to this episode. I'm interviewing a young gentleman here from Dearborn, Michigan, by the name of uh, Geith uh, Mohammed, who I've had the opportunity, I believe, in, in 2005 was the first opportunity yes. I, I saw you as an amateur. I believe you were 12 years old, and it was uh, Super Bowl, the day before Super Bowl Sunday, yes. and we were all at the uh, Fisher yes. Building uh, for a pro-am boxing show. Uh, with a dear friend of mine, uh, Emmanuel Stewart, yes, and you know, God bless him, and you know, may you rest in peace. Uh, let's get started on that. Uh, what an outstanding amateur career you had. Uh, I know that it started before you were 12 years old, so how, how, how long were you boxing before I seen you in 2005? Well, I started when I was five years old, and then as I was six years old, my uncle switched my age to eight so I could fight early and get the more experience, you know? Nobody heard that. <laughs> Nobody heard that. <laughs> but it got me the experience that I fought kids older than me. I, I always used to fight kids that were older than me and beat them. And, you know, I just kept going with it since I was young. And I'm going to still keep going with it until I get this belt, until I get one of those belts. Well, you know, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but let's go back uh, again to your early uh, start in boxing. Uh, and I remember seeing you over there on uh, McGraw Street yes, at the Old Cronk Gym. Yes. Uh, what memories do you have of that gym? Well, I remember the first time I was there as a kid, Emmanuel Stewart walked in, and he, he was like, he's a real good fighter, you know, he was whispering to people, and then I was just showing off, you know, shadow boxing, showing off. And that's when Emmanuel used to call me the superstar on the Great Gate. He always used to call me that. It was, it was real good times that we had with the man, and God rest his soul. Can you uh, tell us about any of the sparring sessions you had there? Because those were famous, uh, some of the people that you may have uh, got into the ring with back I was, then. I was young, back in the, when, when that gym was open, you know, I was young, and until they closed out, I was like almost nine, ten years old. It wasn't too long, but I sparred a lot of good fighters. As Tony Harrison, I sparred him. As I started getting older, you know, I sparred a lot of good fighters, a lot of national champions. You know, it was real good for me, and I gained real good experience off of it. And uh, out of that, you had something like 135, 140 yes, amateur boxers? 135 boxing? amateur fights and like six losses. Uh huh. Yes. And any national titles? Right? I had three nationals. I won the ringside, I won in Atlanta, Georgia, there was a national fight there, and then in Las Vegas, there was a national. I won it there. And then what, what prompted you? What, what made you decide to turn pro? Well, made me, I was ready for it. I, I, it's like I've been doing the amateurs for so long, you know? And then I told my uncle, once I turn 18, I want to turn pro. So as I turned 18, I turned pro. You know, we were downstairs earlier uh, today and, and having a conversation, yes. and uh, we briefly touched on uh, one of the tragedies of the sport. Um, yes. 
unfortunately it does happen and, and, and we, we try to prepare ourselves. I, I know training hard in the gym and, and, and learning good defense, but it, it's something that has happened and we've had in the last several weeks uh, three deaths. Yes. And um, I, I asked you earlier, I think it's been almost two years now, yeah. a, a dear friend of yours passed away in a yes, ring. Friend. He died uh, December 22nd. I, that was a real close friend of mine and it was real heartbreaking, you know. It really hurt me. And to this day, I will always dedicate my career for him because that's what he wanted. You know, he's always wanted to turn pro. You know, he wanted to turn pro so bad that God took his time. Uh, that's, that's what I feel. He wanted to turn pro so bad and God took his time. He was an amazing person, amazing soul, always smiles, never mad, he never seemed mad. That's what a box for has. I'm dedicating my career for him now. It's all for him and his father. That, that, is, that is so good of you, and, and if I remember right, um, it, it, to me, I, I, I feel really sad when I, when I think about it because I remember him training so, so hard for, for that bout, and that was his pro debut, if I recall right, yes. and it would, unfortunately it was in Ohio. Um, I, I know that he always had a dream of, uh, of fighting and performing here at home. That's why I dedicate my career for him, and I'm going to make him for him and make him proud. That's that's what motivates me in the gym every day. That's what I think of every day. As you know, him, I swear he's always on my mind. So that's what I'm dedicating my career for 100%. Well, you're already doing a good job getting your career off the ground. You're, you're yes. 4 and 0 now, and you're coming up for uh, bout number five. Do you know who your opponent's going to be? Uh, Chris Reed, I believe. It's a mm -hmm. debut, I think. You know, it doesn't matter to me. You know, a lion, if he's in the jungle, he runs the jungle. You know, so if I'm in that ring, I run that ring. Whatever they put in front of me, I don't mind at all. I'm just ready. Now, are you in the gym every day? Or are you every one of these boxers day. that are that, every single day? That if I call you and I, I need you next, day, I if I need you next oh, week, I'm you're ready. I'm there for you. I'm there for you. I'm ready. Two to three times I train. I'm just dedicated to this sport. Mm -hmm. Just ready for anything coming my way. Now, how close was uh, were you with Emmanuel in, in training? Did, did Emmanuel work with you uh, in the in the gym? He worked with me a lot when I was a kid. He loved me, you know, and I loved Emmanuel so much. He always had that positive vibe, you know. Every time he would come into the gym, the great gate, and gives me a big hug, you know, smiles to me. And yeah, he did train me. I gained a lot of experience from Emmanuel. You know, a lot of people don't know this uh, if if they're not from the Detroit area. Emmanuel was very very pro amateur. I mean, he loved the amateur. He loved that. I'll make a statement, and, and uh, uh, it's true. Amateur, amateur boxing. Emmanuel loved amateur boxing more than he did professional boxing. That is true. He did. He always used to support us. You know, always. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get to this. Everybody seemed to want to have this belt. That's Tony Harrison is now the, the WBC Super Welterweight Champion. He's he's yeah. he is. Uh, and I need to mention this. We've had over 43 world champions come out of the Crump Boxing Gym. I don't know if you know that or not. Yeah, I do know that. And Tony Harrison is the latest one to come from that. And you carry that lineage too. Have you ever thought of that? Yes, I have thought of that many times. I really, I've really been dreaming about this belt since, since I was young, you know. I, I see boxers with that green belt. I'm like, I want that green belt. I never thought of the red belt, the black belt, I wanted that green belt. Because I knew what that belt means. And I know it's the, it's the best. It's the World Boxing Constellation. It's the best. The WBC is number one. You know, you'll be ranked number one if you get that WBC. But Tony is the man. He deserved it. He, he really did deserve it because he worked hard. He always trains kids, helps kids, you know. And he just deserves the best, you know. Have you been to his gym? Have you worked out at his oh, yes, gym? Yes, yes, I've been to his gym a bunch of times. You know, I was in his training camp when he fought uh, Fernando Guerrero. Uh -huh. I was there for almost a month with him, you know, sparring with him every day. You know, you know he changed his, uh, I don't want to say he changed his style. Uh, he fought the fought that he needed to fight against uh, Charlo. Uh, what are your thoughts on that particular I, I fight? Think, I think he was doing a great job, you know. He kept his distance. He was just using the jab. The jab is what got him the win, you know. The jab, he just kept catching him with jabs, jab after jab. You know, that's what got him the one. I saw, jab. too, he, he caught him good with a, with a right hand early that put some sting on Charlo. And I, I thought Charlo was a little more hesitant that's, of uh, wanting to come in yes. uh, to, to attack him. That's what I felt like. I felt like once he felt that power, you know, he just started being more cautious. And when he became more cautious, 
is where Tony got into his head. And when he got into his head, he just kept the jab and kept moving around. He did a great job. I'm so happy for him. You know, people aren't going to see the right hand from you. They're going to see oh, the left right. hand. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to be a left-hander in a oh, sport that's dominated it's, by right-handers? It's, it's amazing. I, I love it, to be honest. I, I, I have more advantage, you know. I see things better, you know. It's bit, are, are you naturally left-handed? Naturally left. So you throw and throw the ball? No, 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 not naturally left, actually. Okay. I throw a football with my right. I throw a basketball with my right. I kick with my right. I write with my left, and I box with my left. So what is the word for that? Am ambidextrous, I, I think, or something like that? I don't know what's the word, but I can use both, you know. Uh -huh. I got a strong right hook, too, man. This feel for right hook. Do you switch up in the ring at any time? No, I don't, I don't switch up. I stay as a softball because mm -hmm. I'm so comfortable at it. Now, are you more comfortable fighting a person from the right hand who, who comes to you right-handed, or have you fought anybody that was also a left-hander? I, I, I like both of them, to be honest. I feel comfortable both ways. Like, when I see it, it comfortable for me both ways. Mm -hmm. If I fight a guy that's orthodox and if I fight a guy that's self plus, it doesn't matter. Now, I think I refereed you now. Well, you did a bunch of times. Right? I have, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, uh, I know when, when a left-hander is in the ring, one of the things I'm always looking out for is uh, stepping on, on, on a person's foot. And it's not something that, that someone does intentionally. It's right. just that the way you stand right. and you're trying to gain that position, that one foot walk, Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unintentionally yes, step yes. on the other foot. Yeah. Does that bother you any? No, no, it doesn't bother. I always keep my foot on the outside and just, you know, see the advantages, you know. Mm -hmm. It's obviously boxing, you read, especially now with my uncle and Jonathan Banks, you know, it's just been an amazing training camp for this fight. It's just so amazing. Now, you always come out like firecrackers at oh. the opening bell. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just nonstop oh, yes, uh, yes. from the very beginning. Uh, uh, and I, I believe. Was your last bout six rounds? No, it was four. Four. I'm fighting this four round, and then the next one's going to be, I'm going to go right to six. And the one fight of six rounds there, John, JB told me, and then to ten rounds. To so ten? To eight. I'm or sorry, to eight, okay. To eight, and then to ten, and then twelve. Get that belt. That's and we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the other boxer, uh, Fernandez, he did the same thing. Uh, uh, Poppy Fernandez, that's on, oh, on yes, the card yes, that's yes, fighting yes, the bird. Yes. Uh, he's the same way. He he fought maybe six four rounders and jumped to a six, and yeah. bypassed eight and right. went right into the ten. Is this a new trend that we're seeing? Yeah, I think I think that's people want people are hungry for you know the belts and all that. People are hungry for it. You know, it's just that's that's nonstop on our minds. That's all we think about. It's the belt. That's what we want. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, who was your favorite boxer growing up? My favorite boxer growing up, I really liked Ricky Hatton. I really did like Ricky Hatton in the beginning, you know. I always, Ricky Hatton, right now is Triple G. Triple G is my favorite fighter. Mm -hmm. Triple G, I really love his style. It reminds me of myself. He just keeps going forward. You can say we both got the Mexican style, you know, mm -hmm. just nonstop. You're, you're hesitating on someone. Who, who is it that you don't want to mention? Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto. Yes, Miguel Cotto. He was that a tough was, guy. That was one of my favorite. That was an unbelievable fighter. He could box and he could punch. He could do both. Amazing. He's just, I, I really love the way he fight. I really enjoyed watching him. Just, I feel like after the Margarito fight, he had the plasters in there. Mm -hmm. That's what changed Miguel. And then he changed because he got hit a lot that fight. Now, towards the end of the career, he, he came over to Emmanuel and he came into the Crown yes. Gym. Were you able to, to be in any of his yes, training camps? I, no, I wasn't in his training camp. I met him at the and I was so happy, man. The I one was, at the Motor City? Yeah, I was at the Motor City, and I was just so happy, you know, because that was my favorite fighter at the time, you know. I was just so anxious to meeting him and then took a picture with him. It was, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was real good. Manuel always made us meet, you know, great people. Manuel was a great guy. And, and we're going to be doing a street dedication uh, to him in his honor oh, on yes, August 18th. Uh, there by his old restaurant, uh, 1940 Chop House, which I think was probably gone, um, you know, by the time that uh, he started uh, boxing. Yeah. I, I can't remember exactly the year that it closed, but uh, we'll be dedicating that on August 18th. Uh, but coming up on August 10th at the uh, uh, Lexus Belgo, uh, you'll be uh, there on that card. This will be the first uh, boxing show that'll be taking place at that uh, venue. It's a nice venue. Have you been inside? Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. You're going to really like it. Everything is uh, focused right towards the center. Perfect. That is perfect. Uh, it's going to be a very intimate uh, uh, setting uh, up close, and uh, I think uh, 
we're going to see a good show. I, well, I know we're going to see a good show, 100%. but I think we're going to like the venue. Well, I want to wish you the best, Thank you so not much only much for uh, August 10th, but also for your whole career. And I'm looking forward uh, to you being maybe number 44 or number 45 uh, champion to come out of the crunch. Right, it will come. They will come. God's will. And I want to tell people that one of the greatest pleasures I've had in this sport of boxing is to be with these individuals when they're in the amateur ranks and to officiate them uh, when they were an amateur or to see them as an amateur and then to officiate them when they're first starting out in the pro. And the final coup de grace, the final icing on the cake, is when I'll be in the ring with you when you're fighting for the green belt. Oh, that'll be amazing. God Keith, bless you. My pleasure. God bless you. Thank you very Thank much you so for this much. interview. God bless you. Thank you. Cool.